first, I'd just like to say thank you so much for the opportunity to present today. Um, I am speaking in replacement of Dr. Myro, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, we have similar interests, and I'm really honored to be given this opportunity. Okay, so I have no relevant financial relationships to disclose. My work is funded in part by a research grant from the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, as well as a Women's Health Research Award from the Foundation for Women's Wellness. As we are well aware, the ovaries have a fixed complement of primordial follicles at birth, constituting the ovarian reserve. And activation of this pool results in a progressive, nonlinear decline in reproductive function culminating in menopause. And this decline accelerates with insults such as radiation or chemotherapy. Physiologic ovarian folliculogenesis proceeds from the primordial follicle stage, where an oocyte is arrested at prophase of meiosis I and surrounded by a single layer of squamous <coughs> granulosa cells, proceeds to a primary follicle, secondary follicle, and ultimately a pre-ovulatory antral follicle. And it's important to note that most Oocytes exist within primordial follicles where they are relatively resistant to the antimitotic and genotoxic effects of chemotherapy. It has been recently well established that the mTOR pathway is critical to the activation of primordial follicles to primary follicles. mTOR is a serine threonine kinase that is a major metabolic regulator involved in numerous signal transduction pathways regulating mRNA translation cell growth, survival, and proliferation. The pathway is upregulated by nutrients, various growth factors, certain chemotherapy agents, including alkylating agents, which I'll speak to later. And importantly, the pathway is upregulated in 80% of human cancers and well known to be a driver of tumor genesis. And rodent models have demonstrated that chronically activated PI3K and AKT activity results in a phenotype consistent with primary ovarian insufficiency. PI3K and AKT both lie upstream of mTOR. P10 and TSC1 and 2 are both negative regulators of PI3K and AKT. And in rodent models, deletion of P10 and TSC1 and 2 results in activation of the mTOR pathway and essentially simultaneous activation of the entire pool of primordial follicles and a POI phenotype, um, thus speaking to the critical relationship between the mTOR pathway and primordial folliculogenesis. So today I'll be speaking about pharmacologic control of folliculogenesis via this pathway, both as an activator and as an inhibitor. And I'll start by speaking uh, to the activation of the mTOR pathway. In 2010, Jing and colleagues um, assessed P10 inhibitors and PI3K activators as a means to promote folliculogenesis. They performed in vitro culture in both um, murine and human ovaries with P10 inhibitor BPV HOPIC and the PI3K activating peptide 740YP. And they showed an increase in nuclear extrusion of FOXO3A in oocytes of primordial follicles after treatment as well as an increased fraction of oocytes showing nuclear export of OXO3, and lastly, increase in AMH staining after in vitro culture, all speaking to an increase in uh, activation of primordial follicles to growing follicles. The same group then performed in vivo studies, activating first dormant primordial follicles in rodents, then transplanting these follicles um, into the kidney capsule of FSH-treated adult ovariectomized recipients to promote follicle growth. They generated mature eggs, and these <coughs> eggs were capable of developing into viable fertile offspring. They then cultured human cortical fragments containing mm. uh, primordial follicles, xenotransplanted them to immune-deficient mice, activated the dormant primordial follicles, and found that they developed into large antrophollicles with mature oocytes. And as you can see... The ovaries were larger in the treated mice uh, with greater ovarian weights. And in the treated mice, uh, you can see here a few antral follicles. Um, and they noted significantly more antral follicles in the treated mice compared to controls. Adhikari's group um, then went on to demonstrate that P10 inhibitors demonstrated a positive safety profile in the offspring of treated mice. They incubated neonatal mouse ovaries with uh, the same P10 inhibitor, activated primordial follicles, then transplanted these ovaries under the kidney capsule of recipient mice to generate mature oocytes, 
and identified M2s that fertilized in vitro, performed embryo transfers, and monitored the progeny mice up to two generations and demonstrated that mice were reproductively active with no evidence of chronic illness. And again, you can see in the, these images an increase in the size of the ovaries of the treated mice. McLaughlin and colleagues, uh, the group of um, Dr. Anderson as well as Dr. Te um, uh, Teffler, um, demonstrated that human ovarian cortical fragments from 17 women when cultured with BPV, HOPIC, or control um, actually demonstrated some morphologic abnormalities after treatment. And so they essentially cultured um, human fragments with this um, with the P10 inhibitor, um, fixed a portion of tissue for future AKT staining, and then incubated the remaining tissue for six days, and, I, and then isolated and cultured the large secondary follicles. They found that in the treated samples, there, was, um, there were significantly more secondary follicles, an increase in AKT phosphorylation, and an increase in FOXO3A nuclear export, so certainly suggesting an increase in follicle activation. However, the follicles that uh, were activated had limited growth, reduced survival, and some significant morphological abnormalities, including shrunken oocytes, granulosa cell pycnosis, a loss of granulosa cell oocyte proximity. So um, while there may be activation, there's concern that activation um, may not be healthy activation of these follicles. Kawamura's group in 2013 hypothesized that disrupting hippo signaling mechanically um, would, in POI patients, would in a similar way um, increase AKT phosphorylation and produce follicle activation in the same way that in, you know, it, um, in PCO patients, um, historically ovarian wedge resection or biopsy potentially disrupted hippo, hippo signaling and increased follicle activation. And so they performed um, murine and human studies. First in, in mice, they fragmented human ovaries to promote actin polymerization, disrupted hippo signaling, which is known to have a critical relationship with the mTOR pathway, promoted follicle growth, and generated mature oocytes. Um, and then they identified further additive growth when ovarian fragmentation was combined with AKT stimulator treatments. They then translated this to humans, and in POI patients, disrupted hippo signaling by fragmenting ovaries, then cultured these fragmented ovaries with AKT stimulators and autographed it. This required two laparoscopies, um, and in 13 patients, they had one healthy baby after in vitro activation. Similarly, actin polymerization enhancing drugs are thought to promote ovarian follicle growth also by the hippo signaling pathway to potentially um, activate mTOR. So Cheng et al. Um, treated two treated murine ovaries with two actin polymerization promoting agents. The first, jasplaquinolide or JASP, which is a cyclic peptide, and sphingosine 1-phosphate, um, a follicular fluid constituent. They found that there was an increase in conversion of globular actin to filamentous actin, an increase in nuclear YAP, which is yes-associated protein, a transcriptional co-activator in the hippo signaling pathway. And via short-term murine treatments in vitro, um, they cultured ovaries from 10-day-old mice, treated with different doses of JASP and S1P, and identified again here an increase in ovarian weight of treated mice as well as um, ovarian size, um, and an increase in follicle activation. They then cultured human cortical strips and treated with JASP and S1P and identified an increase in YASP localization. So this work was then moved to the clinic, and Suzuki and colleagues published in 2000, um, actually 15, not 14, I apologize, that um, patients with POI were identified and um, in vitro activation performed using AKT stimulators. Unilateral oophorectomy was performed. The cortex was dissected from the ovarian medulla, cubed and vitrified. Ovarian cortical fragments were cultured with P10 inhibitors and PI3K inhibitors, and ovarian cubes auto-transplanted beneath the serosa of one or both fallopian tubes. Patients were then primed with estrogen to suppress endogenous gonadotropins and treated with recombinant FSH um, retrieval performed, IVF and ICSI performed. And they found of 37 patients treated, 54% had residual follicles histologically, 9 of 20 had follicle growth 
growth in autografts. 24 oocytes were retrieved from six patients and transfer performed, um, IVF and embryo transfer performed with three pregnancies, including two successful pregnancies. And they found that predictors of success were duration from the POI diagnosis to oophorectomy and higher median serum AMH levels. And in a very recent study published this month in JCEM, this group uh, identified 14 patients with POI, an average FSH over 90, and an average of four years of amenorrhea. They performed unilateral oophorectomy in vitro activation with P10 inhibitor and PI3K inhibitor for two days. And conversely to the previous study I, I presented where the ovarian fragments were vitrified, these were transplanted fresh. Um, and in six patients, they identified 15 follicle recruitment events, four retrievals were performed, six oocytes retrieved, and in total, four embryos were derived. One embryo was transferred and led to a live birth, and there are four, uh, sorry, three embryos cryopreserved. So I'm sure we'll hear more about this uh, to come. And lastly, to speak about mTOR stimulators before I move to inhibition of the mTOR pathway, um, this group, Sun et al., published in 2015 in Cell Cycle that mTOR stimulators increased folliculogenesis in aging mice. Uh, they treated neonatal mouse ovaries with the mTOR stimulators phosphatidic acid and propanolol. Ovaries were incubated with these drugs and then transplanted under the kidney capsule of ovaryectomized adult recipients. Uh, this increased primordial follicle activation and production of progeny, and they did see synergistic effects with co-treatment. In aging mice at 10 months of age, they performed intrabursal injections with the PA and PRO and demonstrated increased follicular development um, and an increased number of pups. And in human ovarian cortex cultured with mTOR and PI3K stimulators, they identified more follicles that developed into secondary follicles, um, twofold greater than control, and fewer degenerating follicles. And lastly, mTOR activators were shown to enhance folliculogenesis um, in young mouse ovaries cultured in vitro with the mTOR activator MHY 1485, um, which was found to stimulate mTOR, S6K, and phospho S6K, um, as seen in this Western blot. In vitro, they cultured um, ovaries for four days and found an increase in ovarian weights and follicle development. In vivo, they pre-incubated ovaries with the stimulator MHY 1485 for two days, allografted into the kidney capsules of over ovaryectomized mice for five days, and found an increase in graft weight and follicle development, as well as um, mature oocytes that fertilized and healthy pups that delivered. Um, they, when treating um, concurrently with MHY 1485 and AKT activators prior to grafting, they showed enhanced follicle growth. So certainly that data is preliminary. All of this really is within the last few years um, and a lot more work to be done there. And to speak kind of on the um, converse end of the pathway, the idea of inhibiting the pathway is attractive, certainly for fertility preservation. Um, the idea being that if we can um, slow the progression of primordial folliculogenesis and maintain primordial follicles quiescent, potentially we could pr uh, preserve fertility during gonadotoxic chemotherapy. So that's what I'll be speaking about next. Um, I will not be speaking about AMH, as that was uh, beautifully discussed earlier. Um, and I'll start with speaking about CERT1 activators, then resveratrol, AS101, and then my own work looking at mTOR inhibitors. I'll begin with a brief review that CERT1 negatively regulates mTOR, which is important to note um, when looking at this study in which the CERT1 activator uh, was shown to preserve ovarian reserve by suppressing mTOR signaling. So this group identified uh, or divided mice into three groups, control, caloric restriction, and high fat. Four months later, high fat mice were divided further into control, high fat, treated with vehicle CERT, 1720, which is the CERT1 activator, and CERT1720 uh, nicotinamide. Ovaries were harvested six weeks later, and in the CERT group, there was a lower body weight, ovary weight, and visceral fat, a greater percentage of primordial follicles, and a lower number and percentage of corpora lutea. And on Western blot, there was an increase in FOXO3A expression, a decrease in phospho mTOR, and a decrease in phospho S6 kinase, further suggesting maintenance of follicles in the primordial state. And as you can see, there was uh, an increase in healthy follicles in the um, CERT1 activator group, as well as a decrease in atretic follicles. Resveratrol, 
um, is known to have anti-aging properties. And so in 2013, this group, um, including uh, David Keefe, one of my mentors, looked at resveratrol added to drinking water of two to three month old mice for six or 12 months. They examined litter size, ovarian follicles, um, both the quantity and quality, and compared with age-matched controls. And in 12-month-old mice, interestingly, they maintained reproductive potential compared to controls that were infertile. There was a greater follicle pool and an improved number and quality of oocytes. So as you can see here, the, um, the old mice, um, untreated, were infertile compared to the resveratrol-treated mice that were fertile at 12 months. Recently, in um, just this year, the mechanism of action of resveratrol was shown to be an induction of autophagy by directly inhibiting mTOR. So this is all fitting into the mTOR path uh, pathway picture. It's important to go back to the concept of um, the majority of follicles are um, in the primordial state and the majority of oocytes are protected, uh, relatively protected from the antimitotic and genotoxic effects of chemotherapy. Um, recently, there's been more talk of the follicular burnout theory where during gonadotoxic chemotherapy, specifically alkylating chemotherapy, um, dormant primordial follicles are activated to grow and replace the apoptotic um, growing follicles um, that are being destroyed by chemotherapy and thus follicular burnout. Um, so Dror Myro showed that um, using um, cyclophosphamide, the alkylating agent, there was an increase in follicular burnout via the PI3K AKT mTOR pathway. Um, they published in 2013 that mice that were treated with cytoxin at a high dose, 150 milligrams per kilogram, um, and follicle counts assessed at various time points following treatment, there was a wave of follicle activation post-treatment. Um, fewer primordial follicles in the cytoxin-treated mice, but no markers of apoptosis. So thought to be due to activation and not due to apoptosis. They further demonstrated an increase in um, downstream markers of the mTOR pathway, so upregulation um, with increase in AKT, phospho-mTOR, phospho-S6, um, further suggesting that the mechanism of this follicular burnout was really upregulation of the mTOR pathway. And this is also identified here in the IHC images um, with increased staining of mTOR, AKT, and FOXO3A. And they went on to show that AS101, an immunomodulator, um, which is thought to act via the PI3K AKT pathway, protects fertility during cytoxin chemotherapy, um, and showed that it reduced cyto cytoxin-induced follicle loss and preserved fertility. So mTOR inhibitors, um, which will be the final agent that I'll be speaking about, um, were shown in 2013 to preserve uh, follicles in the primordial state, Zhang and colleagues treated rats every other day with um, intraperitoneal rapamycin, which is an mTOR1 inhibitor. Ten weeks later, ovaries were harvested. The number and percentage of primordial follicles in the rapamycin-treated group was twice the control group, and the rapamycin-treated group demonstrated a decrease in expression of phospho-mTOR and phospho-S6 kinase. And it's also important to note that mTOR inhibitors are widely used for multiple indications. Uh, they are FDA approved for endocrine resistant HER2 negative breast cancer, advanced renal cell carcinoma, tuberous sclerosis. Um, really the indications for mTOR inhibitor use are growing rapidly. Um, in the preclinical stage, there's a lot of work looking at um, dual mTOR inhibitors, um, which is uh, I'll be referring to as INC-128. Um, and so there's a lot of work in this area and these are clinically available and widely used. We thus hypothesized in our own work that mTOR inhibitors um, could be given in conjunction with cytoxin chemotherapy to prevent this follicular burnout and maintain follicles in the primordial state and uh, protect them during chemotherapy. We used Everolimus, or RAD001. It is an mTOR1 inhibitor. It's a weaker protein synthesis inhibitor, shows stronger inhibition of S6 kinase than 4-EBP, and can stimulate TORC2 and AKT directly and indirectly, promoting AKT activity. Um, so in some tumor studies, is less effective because of this um, AKT crosstalk. INC-128 is a stronger protein synthesis inhibitor, shows stronger inhibition of 4-EBP, and blocks that AKT stimulatory loop, and therefore has been shown um, to have a little bit more promise in some, um, in some preclinical tumor studies. We had two aims to our study. 
We first aimed to assess ovarian reserve in mice co-treated with mTOR inhibitors with cytoxin compared to cytoxin alone, and ultimately to assess the impact on fertility. In both studies, C57 black 6 mice at eight weeks of age were divided into six groups. Mice were treated with PVP by oral gavage, RAD001 by oral gavage, INC128 by oral gavage, cytoxin by intraperitoneal injection, RAD with cytoxin, and INC with cytoxin. Mice received mTOR inhibitors daily for three weeks and cytoxin weekly for, uh, via intraperitoneal injection, and all mice were sacrificed on week four of treatment. At the time of sacrifice, terminal cardiac puncture was performed, and serum was spun and stored for AMH ELISA. Ovaries were harvested, and one ovary was paraffin embedded, serially sectioned, and h and &E stained, as well as blank sections remained for uh, future immunohistochemistry. And the contralateral ovary was preserved in liquid nitrogen for immunoblots. Histological follicle counts were performed using well-established criteria uh, with two blinded reviewers. And first, as expected, we identified a significant decrease in primordial follicle count in cytoxin-treated mice compared to control. And importantly, a two-fold increase in primordial follicle count with mTOR inhibitor co-treatment with um, certainly significantly increased primordial follicle counts in these groups. This slide depicts the ratio of growing to primordial follicles with a ratio greater than one, suggesting a greater proportion of follicles in the growing state uh, compared to the resting primordial state. And as you can see, the cytoxin-treated mice had a significantly increased ratio of growing to primordial follicles, um, suggesting this follicle activation, whereas the co-treated mice, mTOR inhibitor um, and cytoxin-treated mice, had ratios similar to control. Antimalarian hormone is secreted by the granulosa cells of growing follicles, as this audience is well aware, and correlates with one's total ovarian reserve and primordial follicle count. And we identified a dose response uh, decrease in AMH um, with increasing doses of um, chemotherapy with a significantly lower AMH level in mice treated with 75 milligrams per kilogram of cytoxin and even lower with 150 milligrams per kilogram of cytoxin. And importantly, AMH levels in co-treated mice were significantly higher than those treated with cytoxin alone. We then performed immunoblots to assess downregulation of the mTOR pathway in whole ovary lysates of treated mice. And as you can see, there was a significant decrease in phosphorylated AKT in the co-treated mice, a significant decrease in phosphorylated 4-ABP1, as well as phospho S6 kinase in the co-treated mice. We then sought to perform, um, to identify markers of the mTOR pathway within primordial follicles as the previous study assessed whole ovary lysates. And we performed immunohistochemistry looking for these downstream mTOR targets, 4 ebp one and S6 kinase, within primordial follicles, and found a significant decrease in phospho 4 ebp one as well as phospho S6 kinase within the co-treated mice. And this is a representative image of um, diffuse staining of the ooplasm of cytoxin-treated mice using phospho 4 ebp one compared to very light staining in the mTOR inhibitor-treated mice as well as co-treated. We thus sought to uh, assess the, the final most important outcome, which would be fertility in these uh, co-treated mice. Again, mice were divided into six groups. Mice were treated with PVP by oral, by oral gavage, RAD by oral gavage, INC by oral gavage, cytoxin by intraperitoneal injection, RAD by cytoxin, or INC with cytoxin. And this time, mice were treated for a total of four weeks, uh, one week longer than the previous experiment, in order to provide a more stringent criteria to assess subfertility. Mice remained untreated for a total of eight weeks in order to ensure that the mating protocol uh, reflected the primordial follicles that we sought to protect. Mice were harem bred with C57 black 6 male mice that were proven breeders, and they were bred with two females to one male per cage and given a total of eight weeks to breed. We assessed the percentage of pups that were live born, the time from male introduction to birth, litter sizes, as well as pup weight. We identified that there was no systemic toxicity between groups. Weights were similar between groups immediately post-treatment, and eight weeks later at the start of breeding, all mice had incrementally gained weight with no significant differences. There was no difference in the percentage of pups live born or the time to live birth. And importantly, two of five cytoxin-treated mice were infertile, 
and there were no infertile mice in the remaining groups. The cytoxin-treated group had a mean uh, litter size of 3.4 pups per litter, and the co-treated group, mTOR inhibitors with cytoxin, had a mean litter size of 7.4 pups per litter, which was similar to rad alone, ink alone, and control. There was no difference in pup weight or pup anomalies between groups. And so understanding this critical relationship between the mTOR pathway and primordial folliculogenesis, we demonstrated that mTOR inhibitors preserved primordial follicles in the quiescent state, uh, preserving ovarian reserve and preserving fertility. And we know, based on the literature presented, that there is a lot of work to be done in this area um, in terms of looking at activation of the mTOR pathway for patients with primary ovarian insufficiency, as well as inhibiting this pathway for patients um, who we seek to preserve fertility. I'd like to thank members of uh, my lab, the Schneider Laboratory at New York University, uh, Dr. Robert Schneider, as well as members of the staff at New York University uh, Fertility Center, Dr. Jamie Griffo, Dr. David Keefe. Um, and again, thank you to uh, ASRM and the Foundation for Women's Wellness for my own funding, and thank you so much for this opportunity to present today. <laughs>